the uh, What's Up Jack at the uh, uh, Reno Town Mall and American Matters Studio. And uh, it, I just absolutely love it here. It's a, it's a wonderful, uh, wonderful facility. And uh, if you all can make it down sometime, uh, do so. Uh, we have a lobby out there. We can sit uh, uh, 20 people, all right? Uh, uh, so anyway, uh, that'd be uh, strictly up to you, even though, uh, you know, we have that many people, you have to be wearing a mask, okay? Uh, that being said, we do have uh, um, uh, some uh, uh, of my uh, sponsors that I have to get to. And you know how that goes, right? And uh, and and we have uh, uh, very very uh, uh, certainly uh, uh, Wainema Ranch. Uh, it's a uh, uh, it, it's a charitable organization. They, they also uh, uh, have a, a wild horse a Mustang sanctuary, and uh, it could be anywhere from oh uh, fifty hundred, a couple hundred head of horse down up at the um, at the uh, Wainema Ranch. And uh, that's, uh, that's out there by Border Town. All right. So uh, uh, if you like to visit, uh, please do. The directions will be on their webpage, uh, WinemaRanch.com. Uh, there's a lot of information there, uh, and uh, and also the um, some of the pictures. All right. This is uh, this is this is right at the ranch, uh, and how beautiful is that? Uh, and and you can you can see that, but probably about any given time. All right. Of um, these wild mustangs just uh, running uh, through the property. That is absolutely beautiful. Beautiful. And uh, also on the uh, Wainema Ranch, of course, we have uh, Shari and Eddie. All right. They spend an awful lot of time and money uh, caring for these animals, uh, uh, for the welfare and the, and the, um, uh, the care and the feed of, of uh, all these horses. <laughs> Couldn't you imagine? This is... Uh, uh, th this is a uh, you know this is an act of love uh, uh, to uh, to be able to uh, do this day in and day out uh, 24 7 it, it, you know it's incredible what they do and, and my, my, I tip my hat every time I, I talk about the Wainema ranch and also you, you may you can take tour you can take tour they take tours uh, right there and uh, right there yeah right there that's that's, that's a, a brochure where you can take tours and and uh, sometime if if you're lucky uh the filming crew there's a filming crew that comes out once in a while and that's right there and uh and of course we have eddie out there he's uh he's, he's sharing a um, um a carrot with a burl uh and uh yep yep burls and mules and the, the, the whole thing and uh and, and there's Lacey J. Dalton. She's connected also uh, with the, um, uh, even though she has her own, uh, you know, uh, 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 her own uh, facility where uh, she cares for the Mustang. She's been doing that for years and years and years. Uh, but uh, also she's connected with uh, Wynema Ranch too. Uh, Lacey J. Dalton right here. Uh, so this is kind of cool. Now all these pictures are uh, available in uh, the webpage. Uh, so please go to the web page, and at the back of the uh, web page, you, you can see where you, if you care to donate and help out uh, with the uh, Mustangs, uh, do so, all right? Oh, you want to volunteer? How about volunteering? Uh, if you volunteer, uh, it, it's, it's very, very rewarding. Uh, if uh, you want to get involved with horses, and especially the, the wild Mustangs, that's very cool. All right, so let's, uh, let's do that, all right? And, uh, and so we have, we have uh, the Great Basin Magazine. Right. Great Basin Magazine. I was on, well, no, actually, this is the, oops, sorry, I got the wrong one. <laughs> That's when I was on there. No, this is the latest one right here. And um, and uh, the Great Basin Magazine, uh, it's uh, Cameron Hawkins, uh, publisher. Um, he has a new one coming out uh, for Virginia City Insider. Um, I'll have a uh, I'll have a, uh, a page in there to let you know about my guest on this show here, and uh, and uh, it'll be uh, and also what what's going on uh, in Virginia City, at least my point of view. And then if you take uh, uh, the Great Basin Highway magazine uh, and you go to page uh, twenty eight, uh, uh, no forty eight forty seven, I'm uh, I'm on forty seven, and right there, all right. And this is some of the uh, movie awards that uh, that I've gotten. And you go ahead and you can read a little bit about me uh, or not. And if you're really interested, uh, you can uh, actually get my book, my book right there. Uh, and that's that's uh, in the uh, in uh, the Great Basin Highway magazine. And uh, once I'll take it one step further, is that here's the book. 
Here's the book, Sandy Lene, author, Nevada's author. Um, I'll tell you the story again. You're probably getting sick of hearing it, but I got, got to tell you. Uh, we, we talked a couple of years ago, and, and she said in her own words, she says, you're the most interesting man I've ever talked to. I'd like to write your biography. And, uh, and I said, yeah, okay, let's do this. So uh, we went back and forth about a year, and, and voila, here we have a book. All right, uh, Sandy Lene. You go to my webpage, which is uh, docdurden.com, and uh, you'll be able to, uh, uh, well, the, the book is actually all over the, the webpage, so there'll be no problem finding the book and how to purchase it if you care. All right, it's good reading, and we're going to, uh, we'll update this too, uh, because I've, uh, I've done some good stuff along the way that needs to be said. All right, so we'll update it, uh, you know, eventually, uh, uh, but right now, you can get it on my webpage. All right, all right, and... If, uh, you know, we have any uh, uh, questions for uh, Harold, yeah, you can go ahead and call in, and uh, and, we, 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 and Harold will be able to answer all those questions, I'm sure, at 844-790-8255, right? And um, also, if you care to uh, uh, sponsor uh, this show, uh, this show here uh, is, is now reaching an audience of 15,000. All right, so we have some big numbers here that uh, that a uh, sponsor may be interested in, and uh, and if you are, uh, please, uh, uh, Eddie uh, um, uh, Floyd, who is the founder of America Matters Media, he says, uh, Doc, he says, uh, listen here, since we've teamed up, and and uh, and and uh, uh, I want them to call me direct on my cell phone. Uh, so uh, here's 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 my cell phone number. So please uh, have them give me a call. Okay. All right, so this is Eddie Floyd's direct number, in case you're interested, which is 775-384-4444. All right, Eddie Floyd's number. Let me tell you that again. All right, 775-384-4444, and we're going to break. I just made it. All right, come on back. All right. All right, welcome back. We're well, here in our second segment, <laughs> and, uh, um, we're, and we're here with... We're here with Harold Miller, all right? I love this guy. We met on the set of uh, Crazy Creek Woman, Crazy Creek Woman, and um, and, and uh, that was uh, Robin Adair, and that was kind of cool, uh, and and, uh, and that, uh, that movie should be coming out soon, uh, as far as I know, um, but uh, uh, let's uh, let's get with, uh, you know what? Yeah, let's, let's get with uh, uh, Harold right now and introduce him to the show. Uh, Harold Miller, welcome to What's Up, Doc? Well, thank you, Doc. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, you know, uh, what, what I'd like to have you do right away, uh, which is kind of kind of uh, different than how I treat my guests, uh, even though you are a cowboy poet, uh, you know, I would like you to start the show with a poem. Okay. Can you? Ah, good, good. I'll do it. He's poem. agreed to it, so. <laughs> All right. This one's called For the Horse's Sake. We could never get a divorce. We couldn't decide who gets which horse. It's hard enough to lose your spouse, but the furniture and sell the house. But if I lost my gelding or mare, that'd be an agony I couldn't bear. Because of the enormity of the loss, I would probably start hitting the sauce. So we will avoid a divorce mistake, and we'll stay together for the horse's sake. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> for the horse's sake, absolutely. Love that. Love that. All right. Harold, Harold, Harold. Now, uh, you, uh, you have a, 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 a colorful history here, uh, but I'd like to know uh, where you grew up at. Well, I was born in Corinth, Mississippi, and we were there until I was about six years old. And then a tornado took our house away, and it was oh, very geez. scary. And my dad threw us in the car and headed for Arizona. Okay, let me stop you right there. A tornado came in. All right, at, at the time, where were you? We were in the storm cellar. You were in the storm cellar? Storm cellar, yes. Oh, okay. It was the loudest noise I ever heard. We came out. There was nothing left but the refrigerator and a fire. Oh, that the fireplace a, and the refrigerator. That, was that it. is it. I've seen that in pictures many, many times. You went through that. <laughs> yes. Amazing. And, and that was it. <laughs> we we packed up, moved to Arizona. So Dad said, "Come on, get in the car. We're moving. <laughs> you were moving from Mississippi to Arizona. Yes. All right. So what? And uh, so you were probably what six years old then? Well, six years old. Yeah, yeah. So what happened then? Well, 
we moved down here and he got to work on a dairy, so I got to work with cows. Oh, I used mm-hmm. to ride with him uh, to bring in the cows and stuff. And before that, in Mississippi, he would take us to the movies to see Gene Autry and Roy Rogers and all that. And that just spurred my love for the cowboy life and the cowboy way. Mm-hmm. And so that's that's what happened after we, after we got out here. And then I worked on a few horse ranches and a lot of farms down there in Arizona. Arizona, okay. And, and uh, so, so when, when you... Okay, now you're helping your dad with the uh, with the cattle uh, uh, farm, uh, doing milking and all that right. stuff. All right, and then you kind of branched out uh, uh, only because of your love of the uh, cowboy. Obviously, we did we had a lot of horses uh, mm-hmm. uh, when we when we watch uh, uh, those old movies, and, uh, and I'm with you on that because I watched the same ones. Right. And uh, so you you, uh, you went to your first horse ranch when? Uh, probably when I was about sixteen. Okay, but so we what, had so, animals because we kind of lived in the country. So, yeah, yeah. You know, and we had mules in Mississippi. We had donkeys in Arizona, and then I moved up to Nevada about twenty-three years ago and started doing horses. Okay, so yeah. but uh, at sixteen years old, you're in Arizona, and this yeah. is the first time that you've been helping out on on a horse ranch. Right, and, and, and uh, of course, and and I, I I'm right. I'm guessing the. Uh, the movies that you watch kind of inspired you, yeah, uh, to work. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and uh, do you have um, a favorite uh, cowboy during the time? Oh, yes, I did. The Range Rider was my favorite. There you go. And Gene Autry was second, and then Roy Rogers. Right, yeah. In yeah. fact, I've written some poems about them, too. Ah. Yeah, and the first poem I ever did in, in front of anybody on stage it was called Green Rider, and it was about those cowboys. Right, well, you know what? Yeah. You know what? <laughs> I'm going to stop you right there because I don't want to forget to come back to that. So let me hear that poem. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. One time an old cowboy called me a riding greenhorn. But I've been in the saddle since the day I was born. Those Western movies and shows on TV sure enough made a first-class rider out of me. I rode Happy Trails, cut quite a figure with old Roy Rogers and his Wonder Horse Trigger. Dale Evans' mount was called Buttermilk, and riding full gallop, he was smooth as silk. The Range Rider, me, Big Marshall Dillon, we all rode buckskins when we chased the villain. And Champion and I loved those Gene Autry songs. There was no horse prettier than Hopalongs. That fiery horse silver would always rear when King Asabi and I returned to yesteryear. Yes, I rode all those horses and so many more, and greenhorn's a word that I abhor. Now, with all that riding under my belt, you can just imagine the way I felt. Now, why would that old cowboy call me green when I rode with the best on the silver screen? <laughs> now, I love that one. Absolutely love. Well, of course, I love everything that you're doing, but that was, that was I never heard that one before. Uh, yeah, I was, uh, and, and that came up when? When did you? Th- well, I wrote that in 2004. 2004. I went to Wickenburg and got up and recited it. Actually, kind of read it because I was a little nervous about everything. Sure. I opened mic. And then I ran and sat down real quick. And I thought, well, that's my career and that's over with. <laughs> and then a guy came up afterwards and he, he asked me, can I have a copy of that poem? And I go, well, sure, you can have this copy. And then that got me to thinking, well, maybe, maybe I can do better than what I think I'm. You know, and so, yeah. so then that started, and, and I tell you, it's a floodgates came open, and I started writing everything. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Anything, anything, and everything. Yeah, anything and everything. Yeah, about, yeah. Anything to do with ranch, horses, cowboys, cowgirls, everything. Everything. Yeah. 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 Probably written over five hundred poems. Five hundred poems, <laughs> and, and how many can you remember? About. Thirty. Well, yeah, exactly. Yeah, because it, it's uh, then you have yeah. to refresh yourself. Now, do you have uh, those in your portfolio? All those five hundreds, or uh, uh, I have them in books. Yeah, I have three poetry books. Yeah. Uh, that uh, the most of them are in there, or I have them on my computer. Some of them I just wrote and just forgot about, left on there. Sure. And just, you know. Yeah. And so, but if I get one that that I think is funny or got a good ending or something i'll try to like when i go on stage i'll try to do some of those yeah yeah you know, yeah so. yeah all right so uh so now you're you're 16 years old you're you're on your first horse ranch 
And and uh, the reason why you're there, you've been inspired by uh, uh, Gene Autry and uh, uh, Roy Rogers and and uh, Red Rider. Yeah, yeah well, Red, Range Rider. Range Rider. Yeah. Range Rider. And uh, and of course, uh, as as you you all know that uh, of course I watched uh, all them. It was a consistent deal. All right, and uh, so th did they give you a horse to ride, or were you riding horses, or you it was a care and feeding of. I was I was the lowest on the totem yeah. pole. I was shoveling sure. road apples. Yes. And yes. I had a tractor. I had to throw it in there, drive it out, and dump it out in the desert. That was my job. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and and, uh, and that went on for how long? Oh, that went on until I just couldn't stand it anymore. It was a lot of work and yeah. low pay. Low pay, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, and and uh, and they didn't give you uh, a, a horse to ride now and then. Oh, no, no, no. 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 So, so did you go off to another ranch? Oh yeah, then I would work in farms, driving a tractor yeah. or chopping some cotton or something like that. Okay. You know, yeah. just uh, mostly I would do that just to make my money for school for clothes, school clothes and lunch and whatever. Right. So, okay. Yeah, yeah. 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 And 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 again, you're still, uh, you know, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen. Yeah. 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 And. Uh, so did you ever find a ranch where you could do some riding? No. Nope, what? No. We had a donkey that I used to go out there and throw myself on the back of all yeah, the time. Yeah. You know? And we had friends that had horses, yeah. which we rode a lot out in the yeah. desert. You know, yeah. So, so you, uh, did you, uh, you went to high school in uh, Arizona, yeah. uh, and you graduated from high school in Arizona? Yeah. yeah. And did you have any college? I went to Glendale Community College. And that's in Arizona. Yeah, and yeah. that's in Phoenix. Phoenix. And Yavapai College up in Crest. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And then I joined the Army. Well, I joined the Army first, then I went to college. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right. That's, that, that's a little different. Yeah. All right. And, uh, uh, and Army, what year did you join the Army? 1969, 1972. Okay. Yeah. 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 That, uh, that was hot and heavy. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Vietnam yeah. was going on. But, See, I was a correctional officer, so I didn't have to go because they didn't need any correctional officers over there. They only had one stockade. Okay, now wait a minute. Uh, where, where did the correctional officer come from? Uh, while you were in the Army or before? When I was in the Army. They put me in the military police. Oh, okay. And then they gave us a secondary MOS of uh, correctional officer because they needed people working in the prison. So, mm. so I went to Leavenworth Prison. And worked really? There. <laughs> Boy, that's a... That's probably the top of the heap. Yeah. Leavenworth. Uh, now, uh, <laughs> I, was, I was 19 years old walking around in those tiers, and they went around, you know, like yeah. eight high. Yeah. And here were these grown men, and I was telling, hey, it's bedtime. Go get in the bed. You know, it's like. <laughs> now, uh, yeah, yeah. Well, I think I would have had the jitters. Uh, <laughs> there's no question about it. So how would you feel about that? Well, I was nervous at first yeah you know but i started out in the stockade so i had kind of had a uh you know i was kind of used to it i was in the stockade in fort devis massachusetts and then they sent us to leavenworth after you know about a year's experience so i'm glad they didn't just send me down there yeah know? okay yeah exactly so you had a little bit before you went there right yeah and you spent how, how long in Le how long in leavenworth <laughs> a little oh over my a year God. in leavenworth yeah. and then i got out i was in the Vietnam was winding down then, so they gave us out a year early if we joined the National Guard. Oh, uh -huh. So I joined the Arizona National Guard for a year. Good, good, excellent. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and uh, at that time, of course, uh, um, did you have everything going on? Uh, I, I know the National Guard was pulled out in California and, and other areas in the South. Um, no, not California. It was in the south somewhere. Um, but uh, you didn't have to. Uh, it was the you. most boringest thing okay. I ever did. Yeah. We washed Jeeps for a year. <laughs> that was it. I was glad to get out of it. Yeah, yeah. And, and then, uh, so after that, uh, you went to where? You started working? After that, I I was doing a lot of landscaping and stuff. Okay, you know, yeah. And stuff like that because I was living in town. And uh, when I met my wife, which was like 23 years ago. We said, well, let's get us a, a ranch. Right, I'm going to stop you right off. there. I just got a signal. <laughs> we have to go to break. All right, come on back. Harold Miller in the house. This is interesting. Come on back. All right, back to the show. And this is What's Up, Doc? My name is Doc Durden, and my special guest today is uh, Harold Miller. All right, cowboy poetry. And uh, uh, I'm looking at my engineer. Um, oh, 
I, I get it. All right, how about that? <laughs> um, I must have hit my mic. All right, yeah, we have uh, uh, Harold Miller, Cowboy Poetry, uh, and uh, this is this is fun. Uh, he has uh, he, ha he has uh, well he. He's written 500 uh, poems, or kind out loud. Uh, he, he loves what he does. He absolutely loves what he does. So uh, right now, I, I, I will, before we go on to where uh, he kind of leaves uh, Arizona and ends up in uh, Nevada, I, I'd like to have him do another uh, poem. Uh, okay? Yeah, let's do that. Okay. First, I want to say hello to Belinda Giles. Oh, yeah. Yeah, she's uh, she's liking this. Absolutely. She's the biggest fan uh, yeah, for American Matters. And, uh, yeah, I love you. Uh, uh, but, uh, yeah, uh, Belinda. Yes, indeed. Uh, good. I'm, I'm glad you mentioned that. Sure. And this is called The Flight of the Phoenician. I left Phoenix, Arizona in 1998. I entered into a blissful matrimonial state. We tied a proverbial knot down near L.A., and we moved to northern Nevada the very next day. Now, we ate at the buffets till we were about to choke, and we played the slot machines till we were darn near broke. But despite the neon lights, there's one thing that was true. Though I was living in the city, I was a country buckaroo. Now, one thing we had heard of, and we couldn't wait to see, was a herd of Nevada's horses running wild and free. So one day we skipped the buffet and we skirted the casino and we drove out to Virginia City in the mountains east of Reno. We sighted our first Mustangs. We came around the curve. And I wanted to show my sweetie that I had a cowboy's nerve. So I handed her the camera and asked her if she'd take a shot of me and those wild horses so folks could see how close I got. I walked into the clearing, moved slowly toward the band. Sweetie aimed the camera just like I had planned. I heard some hooves and moving, and I thought that they had fled. That's when I saw the stallion, his ears pinned flat to his head. I lost him for a moment as he went behind the tree, and when he came back into view, he was headed straight for me. And his demeanor said it all as into the clearing he broke, and my dreams of being a horse whisperer went right up in smoke. <laughs> I absolutely love this. I love this. That was great. That was great. And uh, yeah, you know, I could, I could have hours or I could listen to him. All right. So let's get back to uh, uh, to uh, your childhood. And now we're we're, um, we're 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 still in Arizona right here. And uh, so right now we're going to make a track to uh, uh, your next uh, state, and I believe that would be Nevada. Yeah, All right, so let's start there. You left, uh, uh, yeah, you left Arizona. Well, I met my wife in L.A. I seen her, seen her ad in one of them single newsletters. Yes, she was looking for a cowboy. So I told her I was half John Wayne and half Andy <laughs> Griffith, and then I started writing her poems and stuff, and that did the trick. <laughs> she liked my writing. <laughs> So then, I went over, we got married, we moved to Nevada, just like the poem said, the very next day. Very next day. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, we moved up here, and we, you know, we both just loved wild horses, so it didn't take us long. You know, I worked at the joint the, in Carson City. The joint, okay. Uh, uh, Warm Springs Prison. Oh, okay. Yeah, I worked there. Uh, okay, so you yeah. went back to prison again. Yeah, went to uh. prison again. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> A lot of time in prison. Yeah, yeah. Fact, I turned 21 in prison. My birthday happened, and I realized I just turned 20. I was at work. I just turned 21 in prison. I couldn't believe that. And what prison was that? That was Leavenworth. Leavenworth. You were tw <laughs> turned 21 in Leavenworth. Right. Hardcore prison. Wow. So, anyway, uh, so we got up here, and so uh, we, we found a little ranchette out in Stagecoach, and we started raising horses. And I was sitting in the tower one day. That's how my poetry, cowboy poetry got started. I was always writing stuff. But one day I'm sitting out there, and I'm watching all those guys break those Mustangs because we had the horses there at Warm Springs. And so I said, you know, I think I'm going to just go on and start writing some more poetry. And that's what I did. And then I sent some of it off, to, and it got published. And that they should have never did that, because after that, that was it. I couldn't stop. <laughs> yes. Well, you're inspired now. Absolutely. People are liking what I'm doing. Yeah. It's yeah. like, and then 
a guy called me and asked me, it's when we, we met Tony at Grass Valley. Uh, Tony, uh, yeah, uh, Tony Argento. Argento. And I think it was his mother called and asked if we wanted to do poetry or something. And I don't even know how she heard of us. But yes, that's where we met Tony. And then uh, we started just doing, me and Tony and Dave uh, Fisher just started doing poetry everywhere. And I was writing, uh, Dave Fisher writes books. Okay. Mm. Tony, he recites, he's, he's a showman, but I wrote poems and I would send them to magazines and they would get published and it was like, they get published. <laughs> that's cool. Yeah, you it know? is. Yeah. <laughs> and so that's the way it went for years, you know, and finally Dave moved away and, uh, Tony, he started writing some of his own. He mm -hmm. did a good job too, you know, so. And yeah, I'm, I, yeah, just a little footnote. I'm trying to get Tony. Uh, we, we've talked, uh, you know, uh, going back, uh, you know, I've been, uh, you know, my calendar has been full for, ever since uh, August 3rd. Yeah. And, uh, and, uh, and and we talked about, we'll, we'll get him on, but he's still a little bit uh, shy on the COVID as, as, as most of us are. Oh, yeah. Okay. All right. That, that's just a little footnote. Go ahead. Yeah. Go ahead. Yeah. So that's what we did. And then 2006, I was nominated for... Uh, Cowboy Poet of the Year for the Western Music Association, but I didn't win. I had to go against. The well, wait, 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 wait. Let's not gloss over that. So, <laughs> so yeah. So uh, uh, the the Western uh, you, you were nominated uh, for what organization was that again? Yeah, Western Music Association. Western Music. Yeah. All yeah, right. That was, association. Yeah, they held that in Albuquerque and whatever. But I didn't win it. There was five other guys, and I forgot who won it that year. And then two years later, I got nominated. Yeah. Again, but didn't win it that year either. So, you but know. you were nominated yeah. by the Western Music. Uh, yeah, uh, so. that uh, that is that is that is a that is a badge as far as I'm concerned. So. Let's let's put that on. Yeah, that was fun. but the most fun was going when you have a whole bunch of poets and you have like friends, lots of camaraderie, because sometimes I would have to do a show and there was only a couple of us. Well, that was tough. Yep. Yeah. But yeah. when you got about fifteen of them, it's Fabulous. Yeah. You're only doing a couple poems and hanging out with everybody, you know, yeah. and having fun. And so we did a lot of that. Yeah. And we went to Shadron, and Baxter Black was the the big, you know, he's the greatest, you know, he's like one of the well-known, most well-known poets. Oh, oh, is that right? Yeah. 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 And, you know, everybody, and what's his name again? Baxter Black. Everybody, Baxter Black. Right. All right. He came, and he was listening to us, because he was the... The big show, and we were his sidekicks. Okay. And then he yeah. took our autograph. And then he was like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. wow, Baxter Black took my autograph. Well, he knew, yeah, yeah, you're on your way. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. And then we were also, the next year was Michael Martin Murphy. We got to, uh, all right. we got to, uh, he was the, the head act, and we were all sidekicks. But we were good with that. And sure. We got to go to a party with him afterwards. Yeah. And yeah. everything. And I told Michael Martin Murphy, I said, I'm going to tell everybody you're my friend. He goes, well, I'm going to tell everybody you're my friend, just like that. You know? yeah, well, he, he brings an audience in, and that's what you need. You need an audience, and yeah. Uh, so. I had a, a little, little quick story. Uh, uh, um, uh, yeah, he... Uh, he got in talk. Yeah, he got in contact with me by email and and told me not to use uh, Westfest anymore because that belonged to him. Yeah. Uh, wait a minute now. <laughs> wait a minute now. It's it's uh it, it, it's it's um, uh, I forget what it was. It was Doc's uh, Real Cowboy Wild West Fest. Yeah. I mean, there was a whole lot more than just Westfest. But I get a letter from him, an email from him, yeah. tell him to uh, told me to uh, 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 the cease. <laughs> I remember that because yeah. I'd already wrote a story about you. Oh, okay. Which was in uh, Nevada Magazine. I don't know if you ever seen it. Really? Well, well, I wrote about your Wild West show, but oh, that's I right. Yeah, you it. you were you were you were part of the entertainment. We, we couldn't do it. I had to yeah. change the the yeah. title yeah. to Doc's uh, something. You know, I forgot what it was. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah so I, yeah, so I had to. Well, what I did is I I um, I expanded uh, fest to festival. Uh, you know, uh, I really didn't have to really do that because yeah. I had I had wordage uh, before, yeah. and uh, and and uh, so that changes the whole dynamic of a of a wild uh, wild west fest. Yeah. Uh, and uh, so anyway, but uh, you know, uh, to uh, uh, you know, I, I enjoy him and the whole thing. I just added uh, festival to it, and that's. And that's the true story. Yeah. All right. And then you, uh, what did you write on the book? I don't think I've seen it. 
Oh, it was. I wrote the story how your Wild West show was coming up, up yes. in Virginia City, and mm-hmm. all a lot of listed a lot of the. Thing. I think it went to Tahoe Magazine and uh, Nevada Magazine. I don't know, two or three different. Places. Yeah, well, yeah, we know. Uh, yeah, as a matter of fact, uh, in fact, uh, I they, had Tony in a full length picture up there. Yes, yeah. yes, and and uh, yeah, and I uh, and I and I tried to. Um, Sure, uh, and I did. I advertised everybody. I gave everybody their spot and their moment. Uh, yours, Tony's, uh, and every, all the actors. And there was quite a, there was fifty people yeah. involved in the uh, in the Wild West Fest yeah. in in Virginia City. And yeah, that was Reno Tahoe Magazine, and they're right there. Uh, their uh, best magazine, twenty twenty, right? And yeah. uh, and and, uh, and they uh, they and they had that article in in uh, uh, Wild West Fest. All right, uh, we're going to stop right there. We're going to go to break again. I hate to do it, but we have to go to break again and pay the bills. All right, come on back. Ava, Missouri News. All right, we're back, all right? And thanks for coming back. Uh, this is What's Up, Doc. My name is Doc Durden, and my guest, very special guest, is uh, Harold Miller. Boy, are we having fun. He he is definitely a poet. Uh, it's probably the best I've heard. I've uh, Matter of fact, I was... Uh, you know, uh, in 19, uh, well, in 2013, I went to, uh, or, or 15, anyway, in 2000, I represented Virginia City, went to New York, and uh, and there was another uh, guy, I was the only cowboy except for a a, a cowboy poet, he was out of Elk, Elk, uh, Elk uh, no, uh, Elko, do you know him, you know his name? Uh, Waddy Mitchell, by name, so? Yeah, that's him. Oh, yeah, that's know. him. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and we were the only ones there in uh, in New York, and yeah. the only cowboys in New York. How cool was that? All right. <laughs> All right so yeah, so that was kind of cool. All right, so now let's get back to uh, uh, Harold here. Uh, uh, he is. Uh, I'm finding him to be absolutely interesting. Uh, as I told you before, we met on the set of uh, of uh, Robin Adair's movie. Uh, uh, Crazy Woman Creek, and that'll be coming out. And uh, uh, but um, uh, he is uh, so entertaining, especially when he teams up with uh, Tony. Um, um, why do I forget his last name? Argento. I should. Uh, Ar- Ar- yeah. Uh, um, say that again. Argento. Ar- Argento. Yeah. Tony, sorry, Tony. I I I've said your name a hundred times. I don't know why I'm having a problem with it. Argento. Tony Argento. All right. And. Uh, and we're still trying to get him on the show, too. All right. And uh, so uh, before we start with any more, i got to have another poem. Okay. All right. Oh, this one is uh, like one of them old. Uh, for It's kind of a tribute to the old westerns. It's called Gunsmoke Blues. The other morning when I awoke, the TV was playing the western gun smoke. Now, I had things to do and places to go, but I'd always love that cowboy show. So I sat and watched the fictional story set in old Dodge City, Kansas Territory. Big Marshal Dillon was just about to kill two outlaws and send them on to Boot Hill. Festus Hagen and Doc Adams were on their way to back up the brave Marshal's play, and Miss Kitty, she stood watching with bated breath as her lawman stared into the face of death. The mood was somber as the varmints frowned at the giant Marshal that was standing his ground. Then they jerked their guns. There was a resounding boom as smoke and powder filled the room. But everything turned out all right. Marshal Dillon won the deadly gunfight, and there was relief on everybody's face as they all met down the Long Branch, Miss Kitty's place. Now, I must have slipped into a Western mode, influenced by this gripping episode, because I took on the big Marshal's walk and began to imitate his easy talk. Yes, this nostalgic show, it sure left an impression also taught me a real hard lesson. I'm now in the doghouse, and it's a pity. But last night in my sleep, I called my wife, Miss Kitty. <laughs> now, I'm telling you, is, is, is Harold good or what? Uh, this is this is a <laughs> uh, good one. Uh, absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, you can be careful about that. Huh? Uh, but, uh, all right, let, so let's get back to... Uh, 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 your 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 credits there. You at the, the Western Music. Uh, you you were nominated in 2006 and again in 2008. And uh, and then uh, you you uh, uh, you you found uh, Tony uh, Argento and uh, and and uh, and so you guys uh, moved on and did a lot of a lot of shows together. So let's start right there. Yeah, we we did probably 50 shows together over the years. Mm. We did a whole lot in Dayton. We used to go to 
oodles of noodles or whatever that was. Huh? Mm -hmm. And just, uh, we used to go to Bowers Mansion and just a lot of places around here. And then we started going, we went to Nebraska, uh, like, I think Michael Martin Murphy was there then. Yeah, in fact, I know he was. Okay, that, that's where we left up, yeah, with Michael yeah. Murphy, yeah. And uh, we met all the cowboy poets from the other side of the Rockies, you know, and... So Wait, was there anything different between you two uh, from the West and the East? Just, just a little bit. A little bit. Western... Westerners are a lot more open and friendly. Where the on that side of the Rockies, they want to know who you are and what you're about before they talk to you. Okay, all right, yeah. <laughs> so, so they're a little standoffish yeah. before they get to know you. Yeah, huh? until yeah. they until they get to know you. Okay, yeah. yeah. And so, but everybody was nice, and you know, we met like Yvonne Hollenbeck, who was mm. a big, she's a big name in the poetry yeah. uh, business and whatever. In fact, we got to meet just so many people and it was just so much fun and when you have more people there it's a whole lot more fun than just doing I'm a sure. show yeah. you know and so because tony you know he can carry a show for <laughs> for an hour and a half very so, so he, is, he is the entertainer <laughs> yeah 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 <laughs> yes and you know and mostly though i like to write yeah you know and I, I found a guy named bruce the bartender actually his name is bruce flanders down in uh uh, L.A., and he started doing my poems. So I said, well, that's great. I'll write them. You do them. Ah, okay. <laughs> so he did them at the Haunted Saloon and stuff, you know. For a long time, that went on. And, but my best thing... Now, now, even though you are writing them, you write them in a, in a, in a, in a, in a, in a certain genre, what you expect to hear and see. Yeah. Did he meet that? Did you oh, have yeah. to... Yeah, yeah, he, he did. Was okay. Pretty good. He had a he he was an announcer at the Irwindale Speedway race track. Oh, yeah. So he had a really good okay. announcing voice that so he could do those poems great. All right, good. Now what Excellent. I was gonna say is the biggest crowd that I ever did, and Diana was with me, my wife, we did Ava, Missouri, the Foxtrotter convention there. And there was Thousands of people there, and I didn't know if I was going to be able to do it or not. I'm about to have a heart attack going out there in front of that many people. And they put us under a, a kind of like a little pavilion, so they couldn't see us. All yeah. they could do is hear us. Yeah, that was fabulous. <laughs> and it turned out really good. Yeah, you yeah. Know? But you had the jitters because yeah, of, yeah, you know, yeah. Man, there was just bleachers full of people. Yeah, yeah. You know. Yeah. And it's like. <laughs> I love that myself. The, 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 you know, uh, you know I, I, I had an opportunity, well, one time uh, to do uh, the Calvary uh, in Canada thing. And that's like about 50,000 yeah. people in the audience and everything. Yeah. Uh, unfortunately, we never got up there. And I can't remember what it was. Uh, well, we had, our, we had a big deal in, in uh, Branson, Missouri. But anyway, uh, before, uh, before I, I, uh, our time is up, uh, there's a special uh, poem that I want you to get in. Uh, so let's do uh, that one. Uh, I know you wanted to, uh, uh, was there one before we left that you wanted to do? Well, well you, we'll do another one anyway, but I thought there was a... Um, that was the last one I did. Oh, the last one you yeah. did, was it? Mm -hmm. Okay. But All right, I, good. I wrote, I wrote one for 2020, if, if you want oh, to do that right here, now. Here he goes. <laughs> Absolutely. Whoops, this sorry is, about that. This is not cowboy poetry, but you might want to hear it. It's, the year 2020? Sure, absolutely. This is this is this is fresh off the press. This okay. is new stuff. All right. <laughs> the year 2020 has brought trouble to plenty. This horrible COVID-19 is the worst thing I've ever seen. Business has been shut down. It's like being in a ghost town. Social life has come to a halt. Some think it's the government's fault. Riots and protests escalated. Even when COVID was not abated. Statues were defaced and destroyed as protesters became more annoyed. Forest fires out west, hurricanes back east were horrible disasters, to say the least. Many folks' finances were in a tight, which further caused a painful bite. Then it was election day. This spurred evangelicals to pray. Voting will never be the same ever since that COVID came. Thanksgiving and Christmas were certainly lean. Thanks to that COVID quarantine, now that we made it through December, the year 2020, let's forget to remember. Yep, there it is. Hot off the press. 2020. <laughs> All right. That's the latest. All right. Now, uh, 
I know this cultic thing, talking about COVID, yeah. has uh, you know put the brakes on a lot of stuff. Is there anything that's coming up uh, for you, Tony? Uh, are you guys going to be teaming up? I, I know you're going to be teaming up again eventually, uh, but um, uh, uh, is there is there anything coming up? No, the only thing I'm doing now is I'm, I, uh, this lady, this director, she wanted some of my poems and some of my pictures because, you know, I'm amateur photographer. I like to take pictures of mostly wild horses. Oh, really? So she uh, has this golden network on Roku television. So I sent her a whole bunch of pictures mm -hmm. and poems yeah. and whatever, and she's going to do a cowboy thing. And if the network picks it up, then I'll just be a television star. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, exactly what you need to be. Uh, yeah, and 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 this this lady is is where she her her name is Tima Hammond. She's a director in L.A. or actually oh, in LA. Las Vegas okay. now. Yeah. She used to be in L.A. All right, in Vegas you now. Know? Yeah, and she's she does the Golden Network on Roku television. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. So I don't think they've got it yet. I've sent her the stuff, and they're editing, and they're going to try to make a film out of it. You know and. A uh, few other cowboys joined in, sure. or whatever. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you don't have any of their names or anything. Uh, uh, no. Willis Lamb, Willis Lamb. Oh, okay. She's there using his music. Yes. if it goes. Okay. And uh, Kelly Knapp. I don't know if you've ever met her, but uh, no. she lives around no. here. Yeah. And then there's a cowboy over in uh, California named Jim Cardwell. Yeah, and it's us four, and some guy from Vegas. that's a wild horse advocate. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah, I, I'll tell you what, uh, you know, when, uh, uh, you know, we're, we're, we're going to be leaving here probably right now, but I'm going to, I'm going to go out anyway saying, you know what, I do shows, uh, uh, you know, occasionally, and uh, you are going to be a member of uh, the next show that I do. You are hilarious. I just love what you do, and I thank you so much for being on the show. Uh, we got to do this again. I had so much fun, and uh, here we are. Harold Miller uh, on the, well, what's up, Doc, and uh, thank you so much. All right. You. Thank you, Virginia City. Reno, Carson City. All right. Thanks for tuning in. I appreciate that. All right. Bye. Adios.